another one of those videos. Where I just sit in my car and I hope for something good, but it probably doesn't come out that way. I know I have potential. making this tapping noise. That's why I was confused. Sometimes something comes out and it's profound. Sometimes something comes out and it's obvious that I really, really need to say Oh, that one squeaked. Did you hear that? You'll hear it again. I think stuff is happening with my dad, but he doesn't want to tell me because he knows that I freak out about it. They think that I don't know shit, but I pay a lot of attention. I'm very observant, so I can tell when people are trying to keep something from me. But he is really stressed out because they tried to sell the house and it didn't sell, but they still moved in this new place. So he's convinced that any health problem that he has is due to stress, not because of the fact that he doesn't have any skepticism about modern medicine. And that's terrible. For his conspiratorial daughter. And I've cried about it enough. And I've yelled about it enough. But I know that I'll cry and I'll yell some more. My tear ducts and my vocal cords never get sore or nowhere near sore enough. But I guess in this way I'm pretty tough because I face it. I run towards it. I don't think, well, this has got to be a problem. It's a problem, I'm gonna solve that problem. There's that squeak. Is it this one? What's that one? It's probably all of them, damn it. <laughs> yeah, this is the oldest keyboard I've been using. The one with Tupac on it. But anyway. I used to think that if I cried hard enough about the right stuff, maybe that could make something better. Maybe some kid was less likely to get abused. Something like that. Or maybe whenever that kid was getting abused, they would think of something like somebody else praying for them from all across the world. It'd be a mental thing, because it's all in your mind, whether you recover, and what you get over, and how you move on, and if you move on. And I understand why people can't move on, or they choose not to move on, I understand, I understand, I understand. 
There's lots of stuff that people aren't willing to understand. And because of that, well, reality, right? You don't understand your emotions. You don't understand your thoughts upon your thoughts. You don't understand how all these things are connected. So why would I expect you to understand governments attached to the systems? Why would I expect you to understand that this whole world's actually against you and there's nobody that you can trust? No, nobody, 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 even you. You know, how do you explain that to your average bear? How do you explain that to the plebeian sheep as if they would care? They love the TVs, they love their pill bottles. They love their TVs and their telecommunication devices. They love the TVs. It's... They're all squeaking, I'm telling you. Saying I'm gonna refrain from 
They might be the higher ups. They might be the ones in charge. They might be the ones that make all the decisions that we don't know anything about. Is everybody an actor?
supposed to happen, it'll happen. I have a lot of faith, I have a lot of faith, I have a lot of faith. And it doesn't have to make sense to anyone but me. That's why he made me to make sense to me. Do you make sense to you? Ask yourself, is this something you do? If not, you really need to check yourself out a little more Until you're sore, sore, sore And then you know you've done some work That's how you know if it hurts, hurts, hurts That just means that you're growing, baby, and that's a good thing And then you can feel real transgressive Because hardly anybody in our modern society is doing that shit Unless they can be all showy about it that's pathetic, that's pathetic, that's pathetic. You should do something because it's the right thing, because it's the right thing, because it's the right thing. I guess that's what morality means. I guess that's what ethics means. Is ethics like morality applied in society? Am I misunderstanding the term ethics? I need to look this up. Well, we're home, so we can do that. We have the internet at our house. Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? We just open up laptop and there it is. Full blown access to any motherfucking thing we want to look up. Isn't that cool? See, I don't want that in my pocket. That's very terrifying to me. Very terrifying. And I have good intentions when I use the internet. <laughs> so that should tell you something. If yours truly is terrified of what the internet can do, and I'm only looking up stuff to better myself. I'd like to think so anyway. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't say that. Yeah, so I'm looking up stuff that I think is going to be positive for my well-being. But having instant access to that, I mean, I could see myself being really compulsive about it. And if I have any kind of question whatsoever, you know, just pulling out my smartphone and looking it up immediately. And while that is like quite an advantage that people have made use of and, and um, you know, they appreciate it, um, a lot of people don't appreciate that. And like I said, it could very well be a compulsion and, you know, there's just less mystery to life, you know, like way less mystery. If you can just like look anything up like right then and there. people would like really really appreciate it for very long if they have it all the time you know because yeah if you have something for a while like you're you're gonna lose sight of what it really means to have it and how lucky you are and that it's a gift and all that you know because you're just gonna expect it to be there all the time and if it's not you're just gonna get pissed off and impatient Whereas, like, you should have just appreciated it the whole time. Um, but anyway, I go on these rants about modernity all the time because I really fucking hate modernity. But I think modernity is, like, really demonic and it trains us to not have much appreciation for all the stuff that, that we think we deserve. Or just the stuff that we're so used to having in the system that takes care of us. You know, as we've seen with like electricity and you know, the weather, all that stuff. 
it's like if they can control any aspect of reality they can control all aspects of reality you know what i mean oh shit but anyway it's so cold it's like i think it's like 20 degrees outside right now it's gonna get even colder than that but you know luckily we still have God. We still have God and we, we got we got the Psalms to keep us warm, okay? So if you're not still feeling the warmth of God's love, I feel sorry for you. But now would be a good time to um just give it another shot, man. That's all you can do is just, you know, read the Psalms. And you know, they'll change you. I really believe in my heart is a hearts that God changes people, God transforms people. And that's why I believe that the gospel is the truth and the word of the Lord, because it'll move you, you know, it really will. And I, I really pity those that they look at their religion, like in a really vain way. Like I know I cuss a lot and <laughs> somebody had quoted James, which is funny because I've thought a lot about that. My priest quoted that same passage, by the way, that about bridling your tongue. <laughs> I understand. I appreciate it. Um, I will respond to any comment, including a Bible verse. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. It's good to have that, you know, feedback. And I do pray for you, Winston. Um, but, yeah, like... I was thinking about that, and I definitely have learned how to bridle my tongue in relation to, not swear words, obviously, but um, just, you know, not telling everybody everything, not continuing conversations when, like, the other participant no longer wants to participate, you know, it's really obvious um, I can gauge that pretty well. But there was definitely a time when I just didn't give a shit and I would just say whatever was on my mind. But I realized, you know, that was kind of selfish of me and I, I shouldn't do that anyway. It's not, it's not good to just be like totally like whatever about everything sometimes, you know, set and setting back to the, the, um, back to the drug logic. You gotta choose the right set and the right setting. So if you don't have a good mindset when you talk about something, and if you're not in the right setting when you talk about it, it's gonna come out all wrong. So you gotta check yourself, and you also have to check your surroundings, which you know most people don't do. They don't even do the first one. So, and that's the thing with social media, you can just like get on there and spew and say whatever the hell you want, and there's hardly any consequences unless you're not politically correct enough. So it's just like pretty much encouraging people to be like, on the lowest rung of morality, you know? So anyway, I just, I think, I think that I am like a lot more aware of that because I don't subject myself to that. Like, you know, I did that a long time ago, back when it first was a thing with college Facebook, but you know, I realized pretty quickly that it wasn't a good thing for me or society. So I just quit. But you know, people realize that after a time, they're like, wow, I really hate this. I should just stop doing it. And then they do. The smarter ones stop. But the wiser ones, the wiser ones stop. But. Whew. I don't remember what I was doing. You were getting that box, that big ass box from the back seat? Okay. Yeah, we're going inside. It's freezing out here. But, um, yeah, nice chit-chatting vortex. Merry Christmas. <laughs>